This is literally impossible to use if you don't understand how to do it. Today we're gonna to teach you guys how to use the AlphaTrack 2 monitor to test your ferret's blood glucose levels at home. Hey guys, it's Haley from The Modern Ferret and today we're gonna to teach you how to test your ferret's blood glucose levels at home. All right, let's get started. Number one, you need to collect all the necessary supplies to test your ferret's blood sugar. First thing is you need something called the AlphaTrack 2. This is the one that they probably use at your vet's office too. It has a dog and a cat setting and what you're gonna wanna use is a dog setting for your ferret. So once you have this and you have it delivered to your door, what you're gonna wanna do is open the box and inside you will have AlphaTrack 2, test strips which come in a bottle like this, needle thingies, lancets, they're called lancets and they go inside something called a lancing device, which is basically something where you push the needle in the end and then you cock it back like this, I think. Press this button, and it goes And basically the needle goes out really fast and it like pricks your ferret's finger. You're gonna wanna make sure you have Vaseline on hand and also a treat that is healthy for your ferrets and also motivates them to stay still. We personally recommend salmon oil. Where is it? Salmon oil. We personally recommend salmon oil because it's a relatively healthy treat and also ferrets go crazy for oil, so make sure you have that on hand. Before you test your ferrets blood glucose for the first time, you need to make sure that you are using the correct code for ferret. So you'll see on the bottle of the testing strips, there's a dog code and a cat code. The dog code is the one that you want. For ours, the dog code says 36, but I know we've had other kits that say a different number, different bottles are different. Always follow the code of the test strips that you're using. So once you have that, it's reading everything correctly and you're good to go. Let's prick some toe beans. So after you have set it to the correct code, pull out one test strip without shaking. Try not to touch them all like I kind of am right now. What I like to do is open the bottle and turn it upside down so the lid catches the strips and I can grab one a lot easier without touching them all. It is very important that you try not to touch the top or the bottom, the black areas. Don't touch the black areas. The top of it needs to go in the alpha track monitor and for it to read properly, you don't want to get your fingers on it. The bottom is the part that interacts directly with your ferret's blood. You don't want to touch that at all because it's going to mess up their reading. So touch it in the middle like I am. And what we actually recommend is don't put it in all the way. It's still sitting and like stuck in there, but it's not pushed all the way. It won't turn on your monitor because you might not be ready yet. So just set that to the side. Take your um, needle things or lancets. You take your lancing device that comes in the kit from the Alpha Track company, and you're gonna take Schmink you, sir. How do you take this off again? This. So the top comes off when you do that. You got it open like that. You take one of these needle thingies. With it still having the cap on it, you can't even see the exposed needle going to want to put this inside the lancing device. I like to use two fingers to put in the lancet so I don't risk bending the needle. Click, they're good to go. Now you twist off this protective cap thing, pull it off, and now you have an exposed needle, right? Take the cap, you put it back on, I think it twists on, maybe it clicks, I don't know. So if you rotate it, it's at different levels, which basically means how far is the needle gonna pierce into the skin. Five seems to go too deep, four seems to work pretty successful for us, so that's what we recommend. Okay, so now this is all locked and loaded. You cock it back like that. And then later on, when you have it on your ferret's little toe bean, you're gonna press this button here, and that means it goes and it's good to go. So I'm gonna cock it back. So now we have this ready, right? And we have this ready. So we have two things ready to take the ferret's blood glucose. So next you need to grab your ferret, right? We personally like to test our ferret's blood glucose levels after they wake up in the morning. A not ideal time would be if your ferret is like running through the house, playing, doing all kinds of stuff. For one, they're not gonna wanna sit still because they're playing, they're not gonna wanna have their finger prick. If you test your ferret's blood glucose levels 
right after they eat, their levels could be kind of artificially elevated to the point where you're not getting an accurate reading to see if they have something serious like in solanoma. Another thing you wanna avoid at all costs, do not give your ferret a sugary treat before you take their blood glucose levels. It will artificially inflate their levels and give you completely inaccurate numbers. So avoid that at all costs. So the best situation, ideally three to four hours since they've last eaten, you're gonna grab them and you're gonna to wanna to put them in your lap because you have all of your equipment ready to go. You ready to get those toe beans pricked? The way we like to position our ferret is in our lap, belly up, feet towards us. You squirt a little bit of that treat, we recommend the salmon oil. Squirt it on their belly just like you do for clipping their nails. It should distract them for the next one to two minutes and you are going to want to select a paw that you want to use. We make sure to select a toe that doesn't have a lot of fur all around it. We try to do the middle of the toe so that when the blood comes out, it doesn't get matted in the fur and kind of lost. This is actually a tip we learned from our vet. You can apply a little bit of Vaseline to the test site, which helps the blood droplet form and it keeps the fur away. You're ready to grab the blood glucose monitor. Push this the rest of the way in, right? Push it in. What you're gonna see when it's ready is it's gonna start blinking and show a blood symbol in the little strip. That means it's ready to take the sample. You're good to take that sample on their little toe. If you're right-handed, what we like to do is grab their paw with our left hand. Then use your thumb and fingers to grasp the arm just above the elbow. Use your pointer finger to pull back the nails and stretch open that paw. Take the lancing device, or basically that thing that holds the needle in it. It's already cocked back and ready to prick, right? You put it on their little toe bean, then you click it. And ideally, your ferret is distracted by the oil. They may jump a little bit because they just did get pricked, right? Um, but ideally, they're staying still because of the oil that they're licking up on their belly. And you want to make sure there's a little, like, real glob-sized piece of blood that you can get a really decent sample from. A big mistake that we have made in the past is we haven't waited long enough for enough blood to come out of the little finger. And so we try to take the blood sample too early. Make sure you have the blood touch these little black dots there. That's where you want the blood to hit. If you hit it anywhere else, it's not gonna read it properly. What happens when you don't take enough blood for the blood glucose monitor is you get an error and you have to do it all over again. It ruins the strip, it's this whole thing. So what you wanna do instead is prick the little toe bean. Either you're pushing on the toe a little bit to promote more blood coming out, or you're just waiting. Once you get the blood sample, it's gonna beep when it's gotten enough, and then also it's gonna do this loading symbol where it's calculating and measuring the blood, right? Once you get that number, you're gonna wanna record it somewhere. According to Ferrets for Dummies, a normal blood glucose reading is somewhere between 90 and 120. Your ferret may be at risk for insulinoma if their reading is 70 or below. Make sure to consult your vet if you have any questions or concerns. Even though the blood glucose monitor does record it in the device itself, we always take a picture to have a secondary record of it. We'll take a picture of the monitor with the ferret next to it so that we remember which ferret that reading was for. You also wanna take notes, was your ferret fasting when you took it? How old is your ferret? Are they on medication? Did they have any other symptoms that could point towards insulinoma? You took the blood, you put it in your records, and so the next thing to do is dispose of the dirty test strip properly, just throw it out, but the needle, what you need to do is replace the cap back on the needle. Oh no, it shoots out, doesn't it? So the top goes off and then put this on like straight ways. And then after you've capped it so you don't poke yourself, you pull it out and you're good to go. Now it's you know concealed, there's no needle sticking out and you could throw this out. So my point is make sure to throw out the dirty test strip and also the dirty needle. You don't want to use this needle again. It is a one-time use needle. Okay, so now that you've learned how to test your ferret's blood glucose levels at home, go ahead and test it and comment in the section below what your reading said. If you're having trouble getting blood to come out, you can try dipping our ferret's paw in warm water for about 30 seconds. Just make sure to use your own finger first to dip in the water to make sure it's not too hot. Warm water can actually help increase blood flow, so that's why we've tried that. Afterwards, dry the paw completely and then apply some Vaseline. See how the paw pad starts to get redder after some time? That's when it's ready to prick. Make sure when you're using the lancing device to apply adequate pressure against the paw pad. 
We've had with pricking the palm of the foot pad as well, as the skin seems to be a little bit softer there. Grab the control solution, which helps detect if your test strips are functioning properly. You really only need to test them when you open a new bottle of strips, or when it's been a long time since you've opened that particular batch of test strips. After you use the control solution, make sure you hold down the C button for two seconds. You'll see an icon, and that indicates that the device is set. How often should you test your ferret's blood glucose levels? It's recommended that all ferrets over the age of three have their blood glucose checked every six months. And solanoma can be a very hidden illness. A lot of symptoms don't present themselves early on and you tend to catch the disease too late. So if you wanna be extra cautious, test your ferret's blood glucose levels every three months. If your ferret has insulinoma, you can test your ferret's blood glucose once a month. This is a good way to monitor that their medication is an adequate dose. See how much the disease is progressing. So that's what we would recommend. Insulinoma is when your ferret has tumors on their pancreas, and these tumors cause a total mess up of their insulin production, which results in hypoglycemia, seizures, and even death. So it's really important that we learn how to test our ferret's blood glucose levels ourselves so that we can detect this really bad disease early on. If you wanna use the same blood glucose monitor that we use and a lot of vets use in their own offices, uh, we have a link in the description below, so check it out. It is the Alpha Track blood monitor specifically used for dogs and cats. So I hope you guys found this video useful and if this was weaselly the best thing you've seen all day, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for being such a good assistant, Albert. You did great. This. Not on my arm. Good nudie pants, yeah. Let's do this stinky.